term 2a, we are on class 14. We're working on A19, which is the Brashear project, and we're continuing it today. It's kind of a really big project, and it has a lot of pieces, so we're still talking about it for a little bit. If you are trying to send work, please send work to studentwork at nnec.on.ca. Include your full name, your course name, the assignment number and name, and if it asks for a rough and a good draft, please include both. If you need to reach me, the best way is email jillian.percy at nnecschools.org. If you wish to reach out to me on Facebook, I check my Facebook during work hours, capital G, capital P-E-R-C-Y, space, capital W-A-H-S-A. The classes are recorded and posted on YouTube at the exact same address, capital G, capital P-E-R-C-Y, space, capital W, AHSA. And I'm in the office um, from 10 to 1.30 and then from 4 to 6.30. So if you get nervous about asking a question on the air, you can always call the office 1-800-667-3703, extension 2211. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the format of our brochure. We are going to understand and then hopefully apply the elements of color, line, shape and space to our design and we are going to understand the different types of font. We're also going to understand our options in terms of the software available to help us create a nice brochure, although I think we might have covered that yesterday. Um, I just wanted to quickly show you Unit 2. It's not got nearly as many assignments as the uh, first unit. It has only 11. The first one is the probably the biggest project and then 28 is quite big as well. A lot of the assignments are very brief though. Lesson 7 has a lot of small quick assignments that are nice and easy to get through. Lesson 9 also one quick assignment. And I think Lesson 10, although <coughs> assignment 28 is kind of hard, not hard, but maybe long, I think they're really interesting as well. If you find yourself intimidated by today's assignment, it is okay to skip it, go on to assignment 20 and come back to assignment 19 when you're feeling more confident, okay? A uh, quick reminder, it's worth 30 marks. It's based on the novel jo Jimmy Comes Home, but whatever issues are coming up in the novel. So there's discussion about staying in school or whether you're gonna drop out, uh, teenage parenthood, the dangers of drugs, dangers of alcohol, suicide comes up. There's all sorts of uh, social issues that are coming up in that novel. You are invited to create a brochure that will help the reader be able to deal or get help with any one of those kinds of issues, okay? Yesterday we talked about um, a lot of the writing. I don't think we discussed the rubric, however. This is kind of the overall rubric I use to grade your brochure. And remember that on this kind of rubric, sorry, level three is a B, which is what we're aiming for, and then level four would be an A, okay? Now, only some of these criteria are related to writing. Purpose is about your writing, organization is about your writing. The next two are about color and design elements, and then we skip down to language. So I do want you to focus on the writing parts first because they are worth slightly more, like 60% of your mark, but we do wanna make sure we pay attention to the other part too because they are critical. I think they're fun too, but they are kind of critical. Um, okay. So talking about the visual elements, okay? It's supposed to have things like charts, diagrams, graphics, illustrations, pictures. We're gonna talk more about that. And your, your uh, brochure should also have various design elements, a good use of color, uh, space, line. Um, it uses the word form, so I left it there, but form actually relates to 3D sculpture. So I think they probably meant shape, not form. Um, the big idea here is always level one is it's, it's not quite meeting the standards. Level two, it's meeting some of the standards. Level three, it's meeting many of the standards to a reasonable degree. Level four, it's meeting the standards um, above and beyond, basically. So like we talked about yesterday, you should be doing your internet research and then basically coming up with little chunks of information. It's a little bit different than how we've been doing it before. 
And the reason we're talking about chunks is because when you go to design your brochure, you don't want to have like a giant page of text. You just want a little tiny tidbit almost to kind of put in and around the graphics and invite the reader to reach out and find out more. So here are some examples of little chunks of information that might exist somewhere in your brochure. Um, things about warning signs, information on how to get help, information about the organization's mission, what kind of services they offer, contact information, general information on the problem, um, talking about clients, who do we serve? Sometimes there's particular people they serve like youth, or maybe they serve the elderly, or maybe they only work through the schools. That's the kind of information you might see there. And then there's always gonna be a front cover showcasing the business. Think of like how a novel has an interesting and exciting front cover with the title and some graphics. That's the kind of thing you're thinking of for the front cover of your brochure. Now, you don't have to have those exact headings. You may have completely different headings and different types of information, and that is fine. These examples are just there to help people who may be feeling a little lost on how to begin their research and what to look at. So here I gave kind of an example um, on the idea of warning signs for the topic of, are you at risk for dropping out of school? So I was picturing a company that's trying to help uh, students who might drop out and they've got this little brochure about their services and one of the little chunks of information is warning signs. And so it says, are you at risk for dropping out of school? Check the list below. You have missed more than five days of school in the last month. You feel anxious whenever you think about school. You have a lot of unfinished assignments that you haven't handed in. You aren't sure how to do some assignments, but you feel embarrassed to ask for help. You feel like you don't really have any friends at school. You've had thoughts of self-harm or suicide in the last month. You've attended school while high or drunk in the last month. If you've said yes to four or more of these signs, you might need some help. Call us and we can help you stay in school and feel good about it. So um, I wanted to show you this because not only are we chunking the information, but we're making use of kind of a list format that we really haven't tackled before in our writing. To do this kind of list, um, hang on up a second, uh, format, okay. If I did this, okay, there we go. Um, over here, I could choose different types of bullet points. I like these ones because you could actually check them off. I could do numbered bullets if I wanted to. There, it automatically did it automatically. There, let me pull that back. Um, I could indent information. So I could decrease an indent or I could create an indent if I wanted parts of it to go. Um, I'm not gonna, I'll show you briefly because it's easier to show than explain. If I do that, see how it kind of chunks it all over? Sometimes that can be a little bit easier to read. I don't actually like that. So I'm gonna undo that and put it back the way it was. But this is an example of the type of information you might be looking up, okay? Once you have your little chunks or paragraphs of text written, then comes the fun part, at least to my mind. And that is thinking how to arrange the layout of your brochure. And we talked yesterday about some different programs. We talked about how to use Canva, and we talked about Google Slides, which is what I'm using right now to do stuff. You can also use Google Docs, but since that's designed for text, I actually think the other two programs are easier to use. If you wanted to use it, we are a Google school, you have a Google student account, and you would just go to the little blue thing that says Docs, and pull it up and you would just use that. You're also welcome to use something like Word if you have that, or um, I think the Mac program is called Papers. Whatever program you're familiar with and comfortable using, you're welcome to. I just find these two programs really, really easy to use and I wanted to suggest them to you. Okay, so going on to the visual side, right? Brochure is a type of media right? And it's got to have something visually compelling so people want to read it. So it should have interesting use of color, um, interesting use of line, shape, and space. So the principles of art are really going to be applied here. Things like unity, balance. We, wanna, we don't want to treat each section of this brochure as a separate type of art from the rest. Like there's six sections, but you wouldn't want like the first section to be modern and then the second section to be old fashioned 
and then the third section to be just random blotches of color. It would be confusing to the eye and also to our brain to kind of take it in. We want to have a sense of unity. The same kind of color scheme, fonts, some repetition of the shapes or lines that are used to highlight information. And we want it to look balanced. Balanced doesn't mean that every page should look the same. It would look a bit odd, in fact, if every single page looked exactly the same, right? Like here's your text, here's a picture, here's your text, there's a picture. You want to kind of mix it up a little bit so there's a sense of flow. Also, one page should not grab your attention so much that the other pages don't get read at all. All right, now, so looking at layouts, we've got three pages um, and there's different ways to handle layouts. You might put kind of one block of color and then a title that goes across both sides or a graphic that goes right through the middle of, of two blocks to kind of join them together. For this one, we put a little photograph in the background and kind of faded it. I could pull it across to the whole thing if I wanted to. Like I could put it across here and it's faded. So I could put text on top but it gives you a little bit of uh, a unifying factor. And then up here, I could put titles there or I could take that right off. I don't need that there at all, right? Okay, I'll put it back just so I've got it for next time. Shapes can also be a great way to set off a headline or a graphic. And there are all sorts of shapes just in something as simple as Google Slides. I think they're probably in Google Docs as well. If you go up to here to insert, and over here to shapes, you can pull up a bunch of different shapes here, hearts, um, lightning bolts, moon, clouds. There's all sorts of arrows here that you could point to different kinds of information. They have here what they call callouts. Callouts could be things like speech bubbles or little banners or stars. And then there's some math equations here. I don't think you'll really need that. So here's an example where they've used a little banner and then they've written the words, there is hope here. And then over here, somebody's saying, oh, it was the best decision of my life. And then here, this is actually two elements. There's a, a triangle in the corner, and then there's a little graphic of somebody walking through a door. Maybe they're starting their new life this way. So just trying to show you that shapes can be used to highlight information and draw people's attention to it. You can also use different types of lines. Now these are sort of shapes, but I'm looking at the line aspect. See this kind of jagged line here saying act now. I don't really like how it's, let me see if I can change it a little tiny bit. Oh, I remember why it's kind of hard to move. All right, maybe I'll move this part instead. All right, so it's lined up. There you go. So you've got the words kind of running along the shape. This one, there's a little cross and it's kind of showing that these groups are all working together. Community leaders are working with the medical team. Our program is working with you. Um, and then here we've got like a triangle saying we want to help you. Maybe in your brochure there'd be some text here. So these lines are kind of pointing out or highlighting certain types of information. We've talked about bullet points or numbering the steps. It can be a great way to list short chunks of information. It also kind of just visually looks good. For example, signs of addiction or, hey, here's the action steps to get involved in our program, that kind of thing. Then color. Color is a huge part of a brochure and it has a really strong effect. This is a little um, rainbow uh, picture I got that kind of shows the different brand names and how they use primarily one color or another. And they kind of give some examples of the sort of emotions that are associated with different colors. So this kind of golden yellow uh, suggests optimism or clarity, warmth. Uh, Subway uses it. Uh, Shell, Best Buy, Hertz, McDonald's. The orange suggests friendliness, cheerful, confidence, Nickelodeon, uh, Fanta, Gulf, which is a type of, I don't know if they even exist up here anymore, uh, a gas station. This red is excitement. It's youthful. It's bold. Nintendo, Kmart, Coca-Cola, Target, Lego. The purple creative 
imaginative, wise. Uh, I don't know some of these. Barbie, does Barbie have purple? I thought they had pink. Welch's grape juice, Taco Bell. The blue is trust, dependable, strength. Uh, Dell, Lowe's, uh, HP computers, uh, Facebook, Oral B. You're going to see blue used a lot in things like healthcare. You'll also see green. Green has implications of peacefulness, growth, health. Here we've got it for John Deere, Whole Foods, um, Tropicana, Spotify. Some of these are so tiny I can't see. Monster drink. I don't know what this is. It's beautiful though. And then gray. I don't think we see gray as often because it is not as eye catching, but it can be used. Balance, neutral, calm. Apple uses it. It looks quite nice on their the, the silver kind of machines. What else? Okay, there's a um, an auto logo. I think Honda? No, Hyundai, I think. Uh, Puma, Nike. This is where you can see like a Nike symbol would be, it's a black symbol, but it could be on like a very colorful shoe. So this works if there's going to be a lot of color behind it. You may have different emotions associated with uh, different colors, but this just gives you kind of a starting point. Like, are you trying to convey that something's trust or trying to convey friendliness or optimism that might influence what kind of colors you choose? Okay. So color schemes themselves all in general, because most brochures are not just one color at the very least. It's going to be like white plus another color or maybe gray plus a color. I've even seen a few, that are black in a color. I've seen a lot of black and green ones lately. Um, there are some ways that designers often pick color schemes to ensure they're going to go well together, right? There's some classic um, schemes in art that everybody kind of agrees, hey, these look good together. So first of all is monochromatic, where you basically pick one color, but you use different lights and darks of the same color. It ensures that it all goes together. Sometimes it can look a bit boring or monotonous, but it also does really create a unified look. Analogous. Analogous colors sit right next to each other on a color wheel. So things like uh, orange, red, and red, violet, or green, yellow, and orange. Um, let me think here. Green, blue, green, and kind of an aqua. Now, here you're seeing them very vividly. They don't have to be the exact same intensity. One could be really, really light with a lot of white in it. Another one could have be muted out with gray. One could be almost black. So here are some examples of some analogous color schemes. This one is mostly the same temperature. This one, some are quite dark, some are quite light. They can be really um, unified as well. They're considered very pleasing to the eye. People tend to like looking at those. Uh, one really interesting site to play around with different color schemes is one called Adobe Color. There's also things like uh, color palette generators. They're really kind of interesting to play around with if you want some ideas. Um, I'm going to show you that in a second, but some of the other color schemes are complementary colors, the colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. So orange and blue, green and red, yellow and purple. Now here I have them at their kind of equal intensity. But one way to make them look sort of more neutral and not quite as eye catching is to make one side really dark and the other side quite light. So this is still blue and orange. The blue is quite dark and the orange is quite pale. This is green and red, but the red is so light. It's like a light, light pink. Same thing here. It's still purple and yellow, but a really dark purple and a yellow so light. It's almost cream. All right, I'm just going to kind of flip over here because I don't want to lose this. Hopefully it's going to come up. Okay. They have changed the format a little tiny bit since I was here last. Um, so you can play around with this, just physically kind of move it around if you want to. You can also up here tell it what kind you want. Analogous, monochromatic, triad is a, is a think of a triangle three. Complementary is right across from each other. Split complementary, I'm going to grab one of those just to show you, is there's one color here, complementary would be right across, and split is kind of right to the side. Well, let me pull it. Not quite. 
Okay. What else have we got? Square. Obviously, it will be a square. That's kind of a very strong one. Compound is if you're wanting to get quite tricky. Those are really fun to play with. Now, this is where you want to make some, but you can also explore some pre-made color themes. Like here, it's pulling up some green ones. I must have looked up something green last time. If you wanted to say something like, I don't know if it'll work this way, healthcare. Okay, yeah, so you get some kind of color schemes that might look good with healthcare images. Obviously, you are welcome to make up your own color scheme, but I know some people aren't always comfortable with the artistic element. Ooh, I love this one of um, the brochure project. So I'm just trying to show you some shortcuts to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, I could just pull up things like blue if I wanted to. Let's see here. Oh, there you go. So this is primarily monochromatic, but not only, there's some other ones in here. This is quite interesting. Ooh, this is really beautiful too, I like that. Okay, so there's all sorts of color generators. That's a way to get some color ideas. Hang on, where are we? Good. Okay, split complementary. We talked about here some little pictures of what we were showing. Here's green. A complementary would be red, but we've played around and gone more towards the purple and then a little bit into the red orange. Here, blue is our primary color. And to the side of it, you end up with some neutrals right? Some reddish kind of colors and then some yellow beigey kind of colors. And then triadic color schemes are really popular as well. And that's where you have, they're kind of equal distances from each other on the color wheel. You could do it all like really bright yellow, really bright red, really bright blue. But I haven't done that, right? I've really grayed them down or made them quite dark. And you can end up with really beautiful color schemes this way. Okay, talking about font. Font is just basically um, the actual type on your computer. And I found this little meme and it talks about font matters. It says, I will always find you. And it looks so cute and lovely and there's little hearts on the eyes. And then this one that looks like it was carved into a wall with a knife, I will always find you. So this one, cute, somebody loves me. They're gonna look for me wherever I go. This one sounds like I've got a stalker who's waiting to find me and harm me, right? It's the exact same words, but one looks very friendly and warm and one looks a little bit scary or even creepy. So when you're picking your fonts, use your fonts with care. Most times, like if I'm just doing normal stuff like this, this is a very neutral font. Um, I think this is probably, oh, it's Arial. Arial, uh, Calibre. Uh, what else? Verdana are really common. They're they're very neutral fonts. People don't really get a strong sensation with them. But there's other pretty ones. Like I could take this and make it look quite different by grabbing. Okay, here's Indie Flower. Uh, I could ooh Black Ops One. Ooh, that looks scary. Like a little bit of an army thing. Um, I'm just gonna bring it back to what it was. So font can really be changed a lot. Let me talk about that a little more thoroughly here. You can also change the font color. Uh, you don't have to use black. You could use brown or blue or add some little touches of red to catch somebody's eye. Size, like your headings are probably gonna be bigger than your main text and the style we were talking about. Um, there are a lot of different fonts that imitate handwriting. That might be great if you want to include like a quote or maybe a testimonial from a client that used your services and loved it. Like this doctor was so helpful. I'm so glad I joined this program. I had nowhere to turn. This changed my life. The staff are so easy to talk to. Now I have hope. So handwriting looks kind of casual and informal, like a person's talking. This is a type of topography that's called serif. Serifs are little tiny strokes or lines at the beginning or end of a letter. So you see this T, how there's a a line across the top and then a little itty bitty line on the edge. And that's because in the older days when they did writing, they used fountain pens. And because that ink is very wet, those kind of lines were very common due to the type of writing. And they developed ways to use those little lines so that they looked beautiful. So these are all different types of fonts that use serifs. 
This business is mine. We have a program for you. You can do this. Think about where this leads. Do you want help? What's next for you? These were very, very common with type typewriters, basically. This is typography that's called sans serif. That's French for without serifs, basically. They don't have the extra lines. A lot of people feel that these are cleaner, more modern looking. Um, they also look really good on computers. Like I right now, I'm looking at a pretty big computer, but somebody else might be looking at a phone. And sometimes those little serifs can get kind of um, busy and make the writing hard to read. So a lot of people do these kind of um, fonts these days. And you can see, even though they don't have the little serifs, they can look quite different. Like this one is very rounded. This one is a little bit darker and stiffer. This one looks a little bit like a computer one. This one makes me think of kids writing. These ones, this one looks very similar to this, but not quite as rounded. And I don't know what I think about this one. It's a little bit unusual. And then we've got what we call display typography. This is kind of fun. It's great for headings or subheadings. The only thing is you'd probably want to be consistent throughout your brochure. You wouldn't want to switch all over the place from one page to the next. Kind of pick one for your display and go with that. The one exception would be the front cover. Your business logo might have a slightly different font. Um, and some of these, they're just kind of fun. I don't know if you'd really want to use them in your brochure, but they're fun to look at. This one is that kind of stencil one. This one is all caps. This one has kind of like a Halloween-y little feel. This one looks like old fashioned writing, like with a fountain pen. This is a some sort of gothic one, even more like the fountain pen. This is really kind of bouncy. It kind of goes up and down a little bit. This one I think is called Moon Rocks and it looks like little holes in the moon. This one, I think that's Abigail Fat Face where there's um big and then little lines. Um, this one is all lines. This one looks like it's um, shaking almost or moving. It makes me think of like cartoons or comic books. Okay, visual elements. It is possible that you may find some relevant charts or graphs on the internet that pertain to your topic. And it is totally fine to include them as long as you make it clear that you've taken it from somewhere. Just list the URL or what website you found it from. You can also make your own diagrams or pictures and include your own photos, okay? So Google Slides also has the ability to help you create diagrams, charts, and tables. Before I give you some examples, I'm just gonna really quickly include, hang on. So let's say I wanted to find um, some sort of graphic on, um, or a chart, say statistics on alcohol addiction. Oops, I did that very badly, sorry. Images, okay. So this is one based on Europe. So I'm gonna grab this because we're not gonna really use it because we're in Canada, but it's a good example. So if I grab this, I'm gonna go over here and put it on. But I don't want the teacher thinking, oh, I made this beautiful infographic, which you can do that. If you're good at that kind of stuff, you're welcome to. Now, right here at the bottom, it kind of is telling you where I got it. But if I want to make sure that the teacher understood it, I'm gonna go, where is it? Okay, so I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna grab this URL, copy it, and then over here, somewhere near here, maybe I'm gonna take, here, I'll put this down here, move this up, and I'm gonna put this information in here. And I'm gonna put a little information, kind of intro saying, uh, this graphic is from, and I'm gonna make this all very really small so I can see it a little better, because it's kind of so big I can't see it right now. Probably can be quite small. Oh, maybe a little bit bigger than that. <laughs> okay, and move it back on. Okay, so if you did some version of that in your graphic, in your brochure, that would be fine because you've told me where you got it from. You don't wanna just include graphics and I don't know where they're from, okay? So that is one type of visual that you can include. Okay, 
The other thing is if you're in Google Slides, and I'm going to show you from Google Slides just because I'm familiar with it, there is um, a button called Insert up here. And when you click on it, it will open up and you can go down and grab Diagram. Now I tried to grab Charts, but Charts is supposed to be used with um, information from like an Excel Sheets program. So it's kind of tied into math. It's very real time. I'm not going to really use it. Whereas the diagrams aren't tied to any other program. I can just add whatever I felt like. So there's grids, there's hierarchy, timelines, processes, relationship. There's all sorts of different types of diagrams that can help show information. Right. Okay. So there's so many I can't show them all to, but I'm going to give you a few examples. Okay. So on the cycle tab, here is one thing that came up and it's originally all one color. Let me see if I can show it to you. Uh, right. If you look here, it's all blue, but I ran around and kind of changed the colors. If you grab it, I could change the color again if I wanted to make it a nice little peach color. Grab this one, maybe make it a darker color. And then you can also go through and change the words. I can change their size. I can change their font. I could change um, basically anything about it that I want. Maybe I wanted to show a cycle of addiction or a cycle of health or whatever. That's one example of a diagram I could use in my brochure. This one is a, kind of a split um, pyramid. And it makes me think of like building blocks for health or foundations of parenting where there's two or three things that are all working together. So that might work together a brochure where there's, hey, there's this program and we're doing this and we're doing that and they're all going to work together to get you healthy. Now, this is another one where here's the original and I changed the colors, not really very much with that one. I just changed the font and I put something in the middle. And again, it can make it look really professional just because they're so, um, well, because they were professionally done and we're just kind of getting to use them. Uh, oh, okay. Hang on, I'm just gonna show you a few more because I, I had some more here, but I think they disappeared. Grids are just basically like charts and tabs. Something like that could be useful if you were trying to show stats on how well the program's been doing. Let's see here. Oh. Oh, the whole thing disappeared. Hang on a second. Was not expecting that to happen. Where are we? Okay. Um, going back. Uh, here we go. Hierarchy. This would show you a flow chart. I don't know that that would be useful in this brochure. You see this a lot in business when they're trying to show you who's in charge of what. Uh, timeline. That could be useful. Something like this you might use to show Hey, if you call us in this week, two weeks later, we'll be doing this. Three weeks later, you might have this level of success. You know, four months later, maybe you'll be at this level. So this is all stuff that's pretty interesting, I think, to play around with. Is there any more? Okay, relationship. That to me is non-intuitive, but I, you definitely could use it. And then I think I was using the cycles. I like the cycles. They're really something very satisfying about those circles to me. Okay. So this is a really large project and it's okay to break the project into smaller chunks. Sometimes setting a timer for 30 minutes can be a workable amount of time to start a difficult task. So then you give yourself a break, take a quick walk, cup of coffee, watch your favorite show, and then tackle another 30 minutes. Okay. So I am really looking forward to seeing these projects, but it is, uh, a larger one. You're going to have to think about here's my internet research. Here I was writing my little chunks of information from my internet research. And then here I am designing my graphics. I wanted to show you, I just went a little quicker than I thought here. Here was an example of a completed project. Now I haven't got all the information set in. Here my idea was that this is a company that provides school services to uh, students who are at risk of dropping out. So I've got my little picture of uh, a plant growing. We've called ourselves Thrive School Services. 
Our motto is that we help you succeed. And I've got some great pictures of kids outdoors, kids hanging out. We've got plenty of kind teachers, sports and fun, media and arts. And then here's the other side. We offer co-op places. We make school fun and accessible for all students. We teach practical skills like welding, haircutting, auto shop, cooking. And then we respect heritage. We've got a drum up here and then somebody um, talking to an elder here. So I am going to quickly go back over to Canva because I wanted to show you the original and then show you how I could. Oh, I hope it's still there. Hang on a second. Projects. Oh, there it is. Okay, so here's the one I made and it is based off, hang on, let me see if I can add some pages first. If you're not careful, you can accidentally um, go right over your own work, which can be super frustrating. All right, let me see if it'll let me do this. No, don't replace all the pages. Did it do it? Okay, yeah. So this shows you the original, right? I kept the exact same layout. All I did was go in, I changed the words, and I changed the photographs. And I kind of discovered something cool that I hadn't discovered before. Before, I would try and just take that photograph out. But what I found was if I went over here to Elements and told it I wanted photos. Okay, oh, oh and over here I can get photos and then told it what I was looking for. So let's say up here I wanted some sort of um, outdoor scene with teenagers, okay? So outdoors with teenagers. Now, this some of this may be paid for content. If you see a little golden crown, it means you have to pay for it. But you could also insert your own uh, photographs here, but I'm gonna grab this one now it's way too big. I want it to fit in this space, but here's what I noticed happened. If I start to make it kind of small, see how it's outlined in purple. If I start to move it towards that, now see how both squares have purple? If I let it go, it goes into the space and they will make it look perfect and fit in there nicely. I don't know if that will work with graphics. I'm gonna try it right now and grab it. I think a lot of the graphics have a don't have a background. They're kind of see-through. So I don't think it will work the same way. Let me just grab this as something similar. So if I move this over here, it's not gonna, yeah, it's not gonna work the same way because not a photograph. I could still use it. Like I could take this photograph right out, put her there instead. I could make this, can I make this smaller? Yeah, I can grab it over here and make it smaller. If I didn't like the color of her top, can I change it? Sometimes you can change these things, sometimes you can't. Edit, oh, no, I can crop it. Let me see here, edit image. Okay, sometimes it'll let you change individual colors. Here I could apply different filters, like let's say I wanted it to look, I don't know, trippy for some reason. Will it look trippy? Let me do it. I'm not sure if it'll let me do it. I haven't tried this before. Oh, okay. Okay, so now I don't want that, but if I was maybe offering some sort of other services, ooh, that looks very strange. Okay, so I could play around with this. So I just kind of wanted to show that because I'm not sure if people were aware of that. Um, oh, we got through quicker than I expected. Here we go. Okay, quick overview of the brochure. Choose a topic do some research, think about the audience and the point of view, write your text in small, concise chunks or paragraphs, label these chunks using headings or subheadings, include some contact information. Okay, I'm gonna go on about contact information there. Hang on a sec, new slide. Some people put themselves as the contact information and that's totally fine. Right? If you maybe say we're like a mental health worker in a community, you might say, here's my name. Um, I'm gonna put my name just for, for fun here. Jill Percy, mental health worker, call at, and then I would give my phone number, fax at 
email at if you had a Facebook, you put the Facebook. Now, right now, this is just boring, plain text. And this is where if I was using, can I go back to it? Hang on a second. See how they have the contact information kind of already pretty here? So if I wanted to change things, well, let me do it. Magic write. Continue writing. Oop, I don't know what that is. Sorry, I haven't played with that enough to know. You should, oh, there we go. I can click on it and I could put whatever number I wanted here. I can change the font, but because it's already um, formatted really carefully and fonts are different sizes, so it could dramatically change how it looks and I might not like it. doesn't mean you can't play with it because you could still put it back. Um, so let's say I don't like this font and I want to change it. Can I grab it? Sometimes when things are too small to use easily, what I will do, well, let me do this, make it bigger sometimes. Oh, it's not letting me grab it. All right, hang on, I'm gonna do it something like this. Okay, so I could change this to a different font really easily. Something like that. Now see, that's what I mean. It's a fatter font, so it doesn't fit. I can stretch it and see if it'll fit. The other thing if I didn't like that was I could go up here and make the font smaller, okay? And then if you hate how it all worked, go back and change it to what you had originally. Now, if you're finished all of this and you like what you've got, um, here's what you could do. Um, over here, you go share. You don't really wanna give anybody access. You don't even need to copy the link. Down here where it says download, I would click on that. Now they suggest a ping. For us, I would suggest rather than using a ping, I would use PDF standard because it's good for emailing and in all likelihood, you're gonna email this to me. So select PDF standard, flattening the PD. Flattening the PD just means you're kind of squashing the graphics so that other people can't come along and steal them. It's not really important for sending it to me. If you were a professional and wanted to make sure people weren't stealing the graphics, you would want to do that. I don't need to include the notes. I do want to make sure both pages are saved and then I'm going to download it. Okay, and you can see here it's slowly downloading. Okay, it went up here. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to check it. I want to make sure it looks the way I thought it should look. And that looks beautiful and that would be beautiful. And then I would want to download it again and save it somewhere on my computer, right? So I'm gonna save it, um, I'm just gonna put it on the desktop for right now, okay. So now we've talked before about if you're sending me emails. So if you're gonna send me an email, can I do that on here? I don't wanna open up my own email. There's a way to send attachments. There's usually like a little paper clip in your email what you would do is send this as an attachment. Don't just copy this and put it in the email. It's too big. I'll probably end up being able to see like a little corner of her hip. There is a way to play around with it, but it's kind of fussy. If you just send it as an attachment, then I can click on the attachment, print it and see everything you did. Now, if you did this and you don't like what you saw, you, oh wait, I made a mistake. I made a spelling mistake. That's fine. Just go back in fix it, and then you would just go through that process again. You would, yep, download it again, okay? As I've said, I currently have a paid for account through my business, but you can do all sorts of good things with Canva for free. Now, if this looks like too much work for you and you would rather just do it on Google Slides all by yourself, that is totally fine. I am 100% comfortable with that. It just does involve more formatting, right? Like if I wanna make this look beautiful, I've gotta kinda of think about, okay, I'm gonna make this a square triangle. I'm gonna add some color, which I absolutely can do. Maybe that's a pretty color. Maybe I give it a bit of a border. This needs a border too now, I think. Maybe a smaller border. And I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller than my headline because I think they should. I don't know if I want it to have a color or not. Um, let's see, what's a color that might look nice with that? Maybe just a little offset color. 
and there we go. Now, I don't like the font there. If I was really doing this, I would kind of play around with the font. Now, if you are, here, I'm just going to grab something. Let's see. Ooh, way too big. Make it much smaller. Okay, and now I'm going to center that because it still looks kind of, kind of, I just don't look, I would change that. Okay, so you're welcome to play around with that. You can also, hey, I played with this and then I didn't like it, and so I went back over to Canva or something else. Um, does Google Slides have a template for, I feel like they have a template. All right, I'm going to shift away from here right now. I think I've set everything on here. So I'm going to shift away real quick and see, do they have a template for brochures? They've got some. I remember the one that Google Docs has is not great. Okay. I thought it did have one. Hang on a second. Brochure. Oh, sorry. It just pulls up mine. Okay. So I'm going to guess that that means no, it doesn't have a good Google Doc template. There is on Google Docs one that says template for a brochure, but it's actually like a poster. Don't use that one. Okay. Does anybody have any questions before I close for the day? No? Okay, well, it is a little bit early, but we've just finished discussing this, and I don't really have anything else to say. If you have any questions about this, by all means, message me. If you're nervous about it, you can even send me what you've got so far, and I'd be happy to take a look at it and say, hey, yeah, this, you're on the right track, or no, we need to fix this. That's totally fine. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, we'll move on to the next assignment, which will be all about textbooks and stuff for, for the next few assignments. Thank you so much for today, and I hope this was helpful. Okay.